keep your prayer rule and your prayer rule will keep you or to paraphrase what someone else has said I don't keep my prayer rule rather my prayer rule keeps me so let's talk about a prayer rule you know that I have already presented a very basic prayer rule, which is rise in the morning, face the east where your icon corner is, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Then they are Father three times, the angelic salutation to the Mother of God three times, the creed, the symbol of the Orthodox faith, once. Then go about your day, saying as much as possible out loud if you're alone silently in your heart if you're with others the lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me after the midday meal then as much as possible you say most holy theotoko save us out loud if you're alone silently in your heart if you're with others and then in the evening before bed, once again, face east where your icons are, just like you see them behind me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. The Our Father three times, the angelic salutation to the Mother of God three times, and the creed once. And then you go to bed. And I might add, Say the Jesus prayer as much as possible while you're lying down, falling asleep. This will sanctify your rest and give you the best sleep possible. And if you can't sleep for any reason, then you can get up and say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. So this is the most basic prayer rule that is suitable for Orthodox Christians the most basic. According to St. Seraphim of Sarov, if you keep at least this rule, which is depending upon the tempo of your prayers, about two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening, if you say them slowly, it could be a few minutes in the morning and a few minutes in the evening. If you say them very slowly, maybe five or six minutes in the morning and again in the evening. And as much as possible, the Jesus prayer. And the short prayer, most holy Theotokos, to the Mother of God throughout the day. So provided that you keep this rule, the Holy Ghost himself will guide you into greater prayer. And it is the noetic life, the noetic labor. It is this worship which is God-pleasing and which is the very nature, as it were, of the age which is to come, which is to say, prayer is that language which is fitting both for time and eternity. So if you wish to be saved, then you can tell that you wish to be saved because you are praying. And what I have shared is, again, the bare minimum of an Orthodox prayer rule. Now, I know of children, young children, who spend 30, 40 minutes in their morning prayer rule. I also know men in their 20s and 30s that I've worked with to whom I have assigned this very basic prayer rule, the one I just shared with you and have shared previously, who struggle to keep that for more than two days in a row. We are not all equally gifted spiritually. But God knows that. 
So, this is a good point of beginning. If you wish to be saved, the rule that I've shared, keep it every day. But now let's connect this to sexual continence. A number of men that I've worked with have the experience that one way or another, they can make it to 90 days of semen retention. It's my feeling that any man with determination and the ability to use his intention can do 90 days of semen retention. Now, to go beyond 90 days, especially to make it to 100 days and beyond, at 100 days there is an internal rebirth. This is both biological and spiritual. Because you are not merely a body or merely a spirit, you are soul and body. And so to go for 100 days causes you to be internally recreated, both biologically and, as I said, also spiritually. But what you do with that recreation that occurs biologically and spiritually within you has to do primarily with the focus of your attention and also with your actions. Of course, that is downstream of your focus of attention. If your actions are fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, if that is your life's work, fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, then you're going to be able to go longer than 90 days of semen retention, generally speaking, provided that your fasting, your prayer, and your almsgiving is up to the minimums that are effective. And we can talk elsewhere about minimum effective dosage for other spiritual practices, but this is about prayer. This is about your prayer rule. If you want to make it easier to go longer than 90 days or 100 days, you must increase your prayer. And I have found that even this basic rule, the one I've just shared, which comes from Saint Seraphim of Sarov, not from me, this will enable you to retain your seed much more easily. Because an ejaculation, which is to say when your semen is squirted out of your body, whether it's by self-stimulation or stimulation of someone else, whether that someone else be a physical or noetic being. Some of you know what I mean by that. In any case, it is your own focus of attention that came before the ejaculation. When your focus of attention is prayerful, you are in the process of being saved. It's ongoing, just like you save food by canning it. Or people who know how to do that save food by canning it. That's the sense in which we Orthodox use the word saved. It's a being saved. Think of the can of tuna on the shelf. It's being saved. By virtue of the can and the structure of the can and the process that they utilize, to remove oxygen, etc. So your prayer rule is how you may be kept. And if you would be saved, which is to say if you would be kept, preserved unto salvation, then you must practice noetic ascesis. Ascesis, coming from the word ascetic, which comes from an ancient Greek word for athletic training. But this is a noetic ascesis, which is to say you choose throughout the day, rather than your own thoughts, you simply choose, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. You may use the Our Father in that manner. You may use a psalm that you memorize in that manner. 
But you choose the words of scripture, you choose the words of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. That is an athletic endeavor, just like an athlete chooses to run a race. Other people might just walk to the grocery store to buy milk. An athlete chooses to run a race. He chooses to train, to do a series of behaviors which have him be an athlete. If you wish to be saved, you must be a spiritual athlete. And this is primarily noetic ascesis. Now, you also must be sanctified by fasting and almsgiving. There is no salvation without that, for sure. But the highest of the three cardinal Christian spiritual practices, prayer, almsgiving, and fasting, with respect to its eternality, there are not poor people in paradise who will not be giving alms. And the heavenly Jerusalem doesn't need your 50 bucks or your 5 million bucks or your 500 billion dollars. It doesn't. In other words, once we're in the next life, what we now practice is tithing, giving to spiritual work that feeds us, almsgiving, which is giving charitably to those who are in need, first of your spiritual family and then to others, that will cease in the age which is to come. And of course, the Lord Jesus says there will not be eating and drinking in heaven. As I understand it, forgive me if I'm overstating this, but you're not going to be fasting from food in a place where you're not eating food in the way that we do because the state of paradise, the state of the angels, is to be fed directly, both your soul and body, by the divine energies of God, the Holy Ghost. So if there is no need for food and drink in the earthly sense, then what is the meaning of abstinence from food and drink? That's... So in other words, that is to say the tithing and fasting are to sanctify your life in the world, which is necessary because we do live now a physical life and it has to be sanctified if we are to be saved. But prayer is the way to access eternity in this moment. There's a beautiful Greek term. It's a theological term. And I'll dare to say it in Greek for which I beg your pardon, but the, the Greek phrase, it's two words. Eschatologico nin. So directly translated, that's the eschatological now. Eschatology is the fullness or the culmination of all things. It's the end of all that is. Nin is the ancient Greek word for now. The modern Greek word for now is tora, which is literally this hour. Ora, hour, this or that. Tora is the modern Greek word, which is a very modern consciousness. This hour, like clock time. The ancient Greek word nin, which is actually where we get the English word now, by the way. Modern English comes from ancient Greek, FYI, if you didn't know that. So what it is to enter into the eschatological now, it's something like the eternal present. In other words, you can enter into the end of all things, which is, according to the will of God, to be in paradise, which is to say, to be saved. You're meant to enter into that well in the body, by the way, not after, but now in the body. That's what it is to be a saint, it's to enter into the state of paradise, to be in theosis while you are alive, so that you've used your physical life and you've sacrificed it for the Lord's sake, then when you die, you won't die. As has been said by someone wiser than I, if you die before you die, when you die, you won't die. So the way to enter into that in reality, in truth, is by prayer. So if you want to retain your seat, if you want to be able 
to preserve yourself in the state of strength. The easiest way by far that I've ever seen from my own experience is to utilize your energy and your attention in a devotional manner. And this means prayer. And if you wish to be saved rather than lost, this means to pray in orthodox manner, which means to be and to become an orthodox Christian, believing according to the dogma of the church, and then following the saints, following the Holy Fathers by imitation. To, of course, the degree of your God-given strength and calling. This takes tremendous determination, and it is the most difficult attainment, as far as I know, under the sun. But it is also a free gift. The Lord Jesus says it like this when he's talking about salvation. Salvation is theosis. It's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord simply says, Will your Father in heaven not give to you the Holy Ghost if you ask? Well, that's prayer. He's saying if you want to be saved, if you want to be in a state of grace, if you want to be in the state of theosis, if you want to enter into paradise now, because if you don't enter into paradise now in the body, don't expect you're going to be in paradise when you leave the body. Then pray. Any of the prayers of the church the Our Father par excellence from the Lord Jesus himself to the Mother of God par excellence, the angelic salutation to the Mother of God. The Archangel Gabriel is the one from whom we learn how to worship the Mother of God. The Lord Jesus himself taught us how to worship God the Father. So this is the great labor of your life. This is the reason that you were born. Now, my prayer rule is longer than the one that I've shared with you. So, what does that mean? Well, right now, depending upon the tempo that I use and how much of the rule I sing versus read, ideally I like to sing 50% of it and read 50% of it approximately. That takes about 150 minutes, so that's two and a half hours. Now, interestingly, the prayer rule that I utilize is one of the most ancient rules of the church. And notice how it's a tithe of time. Approximately, again, depending upon the tempo. Sometimes it may take me longer. It may take two hours and 45 minutes, depending again upon the speed. So, what's one-tenth of 24 hours? Hmm. In time, it's about the amount of time that I spend on my prayer rule every day. So you might begin to look at your prayer rule as a way that you tithe with your time and attention. The tithing principle goes much deeper than you may imagine. There's a reason God gave you ten fingers and ten toes. The double reminder of ten right on your body. First of all, it's useful for counting prayers which are traditionally counted in decades. Tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, etc. So look at that. Even if you don't have a prayer rope, if you don't have prayer beads, well, you got your ten fingers and ten toes. The whole structure of your being is to support you in the labor of prayer. It's the reason for which you were created. Do you remember in the Old Testament... Moses, the great Old Testament saint, the prophet Saint Moses, goes to the Egyptian pharaoh who is enslaving the people of Israel. And we've all heard, I suppose, he said, let my people go. But he said more than that. God told Pharaoh to let his people go so that they could worship God in the wilderness. This is the ascetic realm. This is the giving up of your own thoughts, your own tendencies, your own desires. Tithing, giving up your own money, 
fasting, giving up your right to eat and drink for a given period. This is the wilderness sensibility. But what is all this giving up? In other words, why are you going into the wilderness? To worship God. That is the labor of prayer. All of this semen retention journey, which is to say, to live a life of sexual continence, which means you need to be healed and freed from the passion of fornication, which means you need... To acquire the virtue of loving kindness and chastity is the great way to acquire the rule of loving kindness. When, of course, it's combined with fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Chastity without fasting, prayer, and almsgiving leads to becoming someone like Sir Isaac Newton, who was a Satanist and one of the most destructive men in history. That's what bodily chastity without fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, according to an orthodox way of life, looks like. So bodily chastity is not useful spiritually unless it's a tool to acquire the virtue of loving kindness. And you cannot acquire loving kindness that is God-pleasing without the three orthodox Christian spiritual practices, fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, but especially prayer. So your desire to retain your seed, I suppose, is the reason you're here on this channel. But what are you supposed to do with yourself now that you're retaining your seed? You're supposed to worship God in the wilderness. You're supposed to die to yourself and make your life a life of prayer. That's the reason for it. If you think that semen retention is so that you can win friends and influence people. If you think that semen retention is for the Steve Jobs reason of becoming powerful and wealthy, which was how we used semen retention. If you think that semen retention is so you can achieve your personal goals more efficiently, then any chastity that you acquire is of no value spiritually because you're getting your reward for that chastity here on the earth. The reason for sexual continence is so that you may worship God in the wilderness, which is to say, so that you can pray in orthodox manner. Wilderness being the general metaphor for the sensibility of death to self, because the desert is a desolate place. The wilderness is a desolate place. Fasting rather than feasting. Tithing and almsgiving rather than storing up your money on the earth. Prayer rather than thinking your own thoughts and saying your own words. That's the point of the matter. Do you know how to sing any hymns of the Orthodox Church? You must. Every Orthodox Christian should. Do you know how to pray using the prayers of the Church? Do you know how to let the prayers of your heart be guided by the spirit of prayer, which you may experience, if you wish, by utilizing the prayers of the saints, which are very beautiful, that come from divine services. This is your job. Not because you asked for it, because God made you and he says that's your job. God created you to enter into erotic, intimate union with himself. So that you may be a part of this eternal dance of Isaiah, which is the intimate loving dance of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's the reason for sexual continence. Because in the Holy Trinity, there is not a procreative life. The Lord Jesus, the only member of the Holy Trinity, who is a man, was a virgin, perfectly chaste, and did not procreate. Which is to say, if you're going to enter into God's will for your life, erotic, intimate union with the divine now and for eternity, 
this is a chaste environment. But that chaste environment is simply like a clean church. A clean church that you're not using for prayer is absurd. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you know how to use yourself, if you use your body, if you use for life, your life, your biological existence, your viability, for something that you think is more important than prayer. If you think you have other things to work on that are more important than fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, and most especially if you organize your life such that something other than prayer appears to take the priority, then you're simply not living according to God's plan for your life. It's just that simple. Now, you're free to live however you like. But my goal on this channel, to the best of my ability, is to speak truthfully. And so this is the true nature of reality, the true nature of you, and the true nature of sexual continence. So if you wish to maintain sexual continence, if you wish to retain your seed, keep a prayer rule. Let that prayer rule keep you and may the Holy Ghost guide you eternally by divine grace, combined with your own God-pleasing intentional labors. May you be ever guided into pure prayer, which is rare. This is the province of the saints. But that is God's wish for you. It is his will for you. If only you will act like it and agree with your Heavenly Father. So once again, keep your prayer rule. And your prayer rule, by grace, will keep you.